Good afternoon. I'm Gary Jacobs, president of the World Academy of Art and Science. It's a pleasure to be here for this forum on global transformations and civilizational prospects. We live in extraordinary times, what we call in the Academy a planetary moment. A planetary moment providing unprecedented challenges as well as unprecedented opportunities for collective social progress and evolution. The question before us is whether we can convert this planetary moment into planetary momentum for rapid global social transformation. And that's what I'd like to discuss with you here this afternoon. Back in 2013, the World Academy partnered with the United Nations office in Geneva for a conference on opportunities and challenges of the 21st century, the search for a new paradigm. We looked at the political, social, ecological, financial, economic, technological, and, and social challenges at the time. The problems of security, global governance, human rights, democracy. That was before the retreat for democracy became very clear. The polarization of society was aggravated. The competition, uh, the competitive nationalism uh, that we see in recent times went in. It was before the sense of slow down or on global, addressing global climate change had happened. It was when the financial crisis, we had hopes of finally coming out of the crisis of 2008 before we have entered into a new and potentially much more devastating financial and economic situation with levels of unemployment we haven't seen for many decades, in some cases, uh, uh, since the Great Depression. So, if anything, the issues we face today are more pressing, more strenuous, more challenging than they were when we had that conference. At that time, we studied, and since that time, we have been studying what are the requirements for meeting these global challenges effectively. And we found they have common characteristics. For one thing, all of them are global in nature. Even the issue of unemployment and finance, all of them are interconnected with each other. None of them can be addressed effectively independent of each other because of the complex interdependence and linkages between them. None of them can be effectively addressed through the existing prevailing policies, institutions we have, or the theoretical framework on which these institutions are functioning. We need a new paradigm in thought to support a new paradigm in strategy, policy, institutional effectiveness, and action. And none of them can be effectively addressed without changing the way we think. We're going to have to overcome this fragmented, piecemeal way of uh, understanding reality, looking at things in little parts. We're going to have to look at the global social reality, the whole planet, and all our problems, all our sectors, all our issues as parts of an integrated whole, a living reality. And that's why the study of globalistics that's been being done in Russia and the region today, and especially at Moscow State University and in collaboration with UNESCO and with partners around the world is so important. And it's more obvious today, perhaps, than at any time in the past. Last year, we began a second project of collaboration with the United Nations office in Geneva, an initiative called Global Leadership in the 21st Century. This is a multidimensional, multi-stakeholder, multi-sectoral project in quest for transformational catalytic strategies to break the leadership, global leadership vacuum, to fill the gap and address the full spectrum of global social challenges. And this project covers the full range of issues on the agenda, peace, security, disarmament, economy, finance and employment, education, health, welfare and culture, energy, ecology, climate, science and technology, 
governance, rule of law, democracy, human rights. This project has a little different focus. Our focus is not exclusively or primarily on the problems or even the ultimate solutions to those problems. There are a lot of organizations working around the world, wonderful, fine organizations, formulating effective solutions. What we're particularly interested in is how do we accelerate change? How do we break the logjam, the inertia, the absence of leadership, the vested interests, the entrenched forces that prevent us from moving ahead on known solutions, proven remedies that we have but are not able to move forward? How do we shift the focus from a slow trial and error process of social evolution to rapid, effective social transformation? The idea of social transformation is not new. We've known great social transformations of the past. It's not a utopian idea. The New Deal, which tried to humanize capitalism in the 30s, the US civil rights movement, the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa, the Green Revolution in India, which spread all over uh, the world to developing countries, the environmental movement, which began in its infancy in the 70s and has grown to such major proportions. It's all around the world and virtually changing the way we do everything. The personal computer revolution, the internet as the first truly global social system, the emergence of uncentralized self-organizing networks, the change in the very structure of the organization of our global society into a much more flat, distributed, interactive network formation. We've seen these, these transformations, not just at the national level, but at the global level as well. The founding of the United Nations, the collapse of colonial empires after World War II, which was really not anticipated. The multiplication of nation states from just 45 or 50 to 193 in a few decades. The Bretton Woods agreements, the end of the Cold War, the founding of the European Union, the democratization of Eastern Europe, the emergence of youth leadership on the environment, which we're seeing so powerfully today. So these transformations are not really new, but we need them now, and we need them to be more powerful and effective. And we need to understand the process by which they're generated and how we can increase the results. The UN agencies themselves, the international institutions, have had a tremendous impact on the past. We've seen how uh, the role of UNICEF in enhancing child health, nutrition, and lifespan, the eradication of smallpox, the fight against AIDS by WHO, ILO's work on employment and employment standards, the World Food, Pro food Program's work on global food security, gender equality, in education, being the tremendous efforts and strides of UNESCO all over the world. The success of the International Telecommunications Union in creating technical standards on a global basis. The Convention of Biodiversity by UNEP. The eradication of landmines, which won the Nobel Prize, the ICBL. And of course, the adoption of Agenda 2030. And I mention these things just to emphasize the fact that this is not a utopian initiative. What we need is not utopia, is what we need is a greater precision of knowledge, of, not of the parts, but of the whole process by which we change. The whole process by which the various problems and sectors and issues and forces in global society interact with one another. The complex interdependencies and the process by which change takes place. Change has always been taking place. And that's why the focus of uh, Moscow State and other institutions on globalistics, the study of the globalistics is so important. There's so much more we need to know. And more importantly, we need to find a way to take that knowledge and translate it into practice by our multilateral institutions in collaboration with nation states. I call this a multi-stakeholder consultation. We're involving international organizations, nation states, educational institutions, scientific engineering and technological communities, business and finance community, civil society, youth movements, media groups, uh, 
and as I mentioned earlier, the arts and humanities. And I'm saying this because in reaching and addressing you today, I'm also trying to issue an invitation. We seek your collaboration, we seek your involvement, we seek your participation. We have the upcoming conference next month. We welcome proposals. We wel welcome your participation. And that leaves us still six months further before the final conference at the UN in Geneva, October 27th and 28th, and our final report to the UN. And after that, our efforts to translate this into an educational curriculum, particularly a postgraduate educational curriculum, to prepare the next generation of managers, executives, diplomats, business leaders, engineers and technocrats, inventors, systems organizers, to understand the global society that we live in today and to have the knowledge necessary to be much more effective leaders in carrying it forward, in accelerating transformation. And when I speak of leadership, I don't just mean training or educating more dynamic, more knowledgeable, more dedicated individual leaders. Today, the world is much more complex. It's not just individuals play a critical part in leadership, as we saw uh, with Greta Thunberg on the Fridays for the Future. But organizations can also play that role, as the IPCC played, as the Co Coalition for Banning the Landmines has played. Ideas can play a leadership role, like the idea of sustainability, first introduced by the Brand Com Brundtland Commission, uh, and the ideas today uh, about the urgency, the planetary emergency, which the Club of Rome is uh, featuring, which you'll hear about later today. Values can play that role, as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights have done it. Goals can play that leadership role, as the 17 SDGs are doing. Measures of progress can do so, as the Human Development Index of UNDP and much more recent efforts to develop new measures and indices for valid investments, for corporate performance, for real economic return and impact on the welfare and sustainability of society. But we also need theory. We need theory that understands the complexity of the world today. We need new types of thinking. Systematic thinking, thinking that handles complexity, but also thinking that handles the in organic integrity of the world as a single planetary system. And we need social movements. If this is not the change cannot be done by governments alone, it cannot be done in a top down way. We're talking about a radical change in the social, cultural, psychological, intellectual understanding of the world. It can only be done when we're able to awaken the awareness, the aspiration, the values, the commitment, and the initiative of global social society. We need in new institutions, new linkages, new forms of networking in order to awaken and accelerate that process of communication and networking all over the world so humanity as a whole can move forward. These are ambitious goals, very ambitious goals, and we are at the very early stages of working on how to bring them about. We need and welcome and invite your collaboration, participation. Leadership is a transformative social process. Leadership can accomplish what leaders alone cannot. And I'd like to leave you with a few key questions that I hope that will be addressed at our forum this time and in the sessions that follow this afternoon and the sessions that follow in subsequent days. What examples can you cite of effective leadership strategies at the organizational, local, national, and global level? What principles of effective leadership can we draw on from those examples? What innovative leadership initiatives has taken place in your organization, in your field, in your country, by a that can be applied to rapidly change, accelerate change in this century, in this field and in other fields, here and elsewhere. 
What insights can be drawn from these examples to address the pressing global challenges through innovative leadership initiatives? How can we apply these insights to enhance and accelerate global progress on these issues? How can we nurture a new paradigm in thought that will unleash, guide, and support a new paradigm in action? How can we generate the awareness, release the energy, and empower the agents to catalyst global society for rapid social transformation? Thank you.